Sorry. It looks like Dior just... <sighs> they dropped a new bronzer, like... And the packaging, like, I'm such a sucker for packaging. And I had just told myself that I didn't, that I wasn't gonna be purchasing any more makeup, but like, but oh my god. This packaging? Do I need more bronzer? Let me stop. Let me stop. I'll think about it after I work, aka film. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys who are new to this channel, my name is Dre. I do Chanel-centric videos because I have a background in Chanel and I do other luxury handbags, luxury skincare and luxury makeup content. So if you guys are into that vibe, into my vibe, into like vibes in general, um, subscribe for more content. So previously I had done a video on five items, five Chanel items I would repurchase if my entire Chanel makeup collection disappeared which would be like a complete travesty. But so today I kind of wanted to switch gears a little bit um, because my collection is, it's not as extensive as a lot of gurus on here, but I don't think I ever want my makeup collection to be that extensive um, because realistically, like in this lifetime, like I only have one face, I can only use so much. But you know, with that being said, like I do have more makeup than the average person. But, and out of the, my entire collection, I do have favorites and I do have staples. So if my entire collection were to disappear today these are the five items that i would definitely repurchase and have to replenish um just to get my collection started again and just a side note i was kind of re-watching some of my older videos because um again like i kind of took a year off of youtube on and off um and just like within the last like two one year two years i haven't been like really consistent in general and i mean it has affected my engagement but like you know for those of you guys who stuck around i really appreciate it but um i was looking back on my videos as i'm filming new videos i do feel a little different and i couldn't put my finger on what what it was like i just knew something was different i just couldn't figure out what it was and i went back and i watched a couple of my old videos especially the ones that got like um a lot of engagement just i went back and looked you know back on some of my videos and there is such a difference in energy like back then like i sounded like so excited i was so exuberant i was just so joyous i was just like this ball of sunshine and ball of energy and i was like oh my god like what changed and i mean a lot of things in my life have changed you know just recently and i think that's a big contributing factor to how i present myself on camera and you know things of that sort um but back then i was definitely more concentrated on being a chanel teacher and now i think i'm kind of and i kind of have to almost rediscover who i am and almost kind of like re-identify myself on camera i think that's what accounts for the change of tone because again now that i've departed from chanel but i still want to do youtube i can't well i can but like i don't want to just focus all of my energy on creating chanel content i will still create chanel content because i think chanel is still like a really big part of my identity you know in a in an attempt to switch gears i'm still again i have to kind of find my footing again on how to still be a teacher still be a content creator but still allow myself to shine through while still talking about stuff that you guys want to listen to or like stuff that you guys want to know about you know i appreciate you guys sticking by me as i you know try to navigate these waters and i realize that i've been doing youtube for like close to five years now which is crazy um but yeah, like it's, I mean, it's a nice feeling. With that being said, again, my interests tend to be pretty long, but let's just hop right into it. These are five makeup items that I would repurchase if my entire collection tragically disappeared today. So I'm just gonna kind of rip the band-aid off on this one and I wouldn't, okay, so this one initially wasn't marketed as a makeup product, but it soon became marketed as a makeup product when a lot of influencers started using it as a primer. And it is the Sicily, I mean, people just call it the Sicily primer, but this one is the Sicily Double Tensure um, Instant and Long Term Serum. So a lot of makeup gurus started using this as a uh, makeup primer. And I was like, what the heck? Because I mean, again, working at Nordstrom, like I have known this product to exist for a long time. And for Sicily, like I knew it was more on the pricier side of skincare but none of their products really um appealed to me i don't know why it just never appealed to me because i think a lot of it was like rose centered and i'm not really like a rose skincare kind of person like that's just not my vibe 
So I never gravitated towards any other stuff, but like again, but this product started picking up a lot of traction. So me being me and being curious, I was like, you know what, like, let me just give it a try. So I asked for a sample and then I asked for another sample and I asked for another sample and I was like, you know what, screw it, let me just buy it. So this product is so expensive. It's like 200 bucks, I believe. $200 for a primer is definitely, is definitely reaching. It's definitely too expensive for a primer. However, this is skincare. Um, it is skincare that works really well as a makeup product. One pump is like $20 and it's kind of mortifying, but it's such a good product and I definitely save this for like special occasions. So I definitely kind of only use this when I need my makeup to look like super snatched or like if I have like a special event that day where I want to look super glowy and I want to have healthy looking skin and I want my makeup to just like lay down perfectly on my skin. This is what I use, um, the Sisley Serum. A little pricey and I kind of, you know, grappled back and forth whether I wanted to, you know, include this in my list. But at the end of the day, like complexion means a lot to me. And I feel like having a good base and having a good complexion, what's gonna make or break your makeup look. Like, I mean, you can have like a bold, very pretty eye look, but if you have cakey skin, it kind of distracts from the whole look. So I feel like having a good complexion just provides a perfect base for a perfect makeup application or a perfect makeup look. And this is very critical for that. So if again, my entire collection disappeared, I guess I would just have to rip off the band-aid and start over and take the dive and buy a $200 primer serum for my face. So kind of like sticking with the complexion trend. My favorite concealer is from Clay de Peau. Um, it is expensive for what it is. Um, it comes in this box. I do have, do I have it with me? Yes, I do. One that I'm in the middle of using here and I'm, I use a shade almond mixed with ivory. So this is what it looks like. I don't have very much of it left. However, even when it's the surface kind of evens out, dig it out with a brush. I promise there's more product in there. So this is my favorite concealer of all time. I've tried the Chanel one. I do love the Chanel one. I love the NARS one, but overall this one is my favorite one. It's a, it's so creamy. It's so pigmented. It doesn't settle into your fine lines. Um, and it's very long wearing. It's just such a good quality concealer. And my only gripe with it, it's $80. I believe it's $80 at the very least 60. So like, again, even 60 is kind of reaching for a concealer. Like the Chanel one is 43. I think it might've gone up in price to 45 at this point. And that's expensive for a concealer. Like I'll be real, that's expensive. So this is like double that. I believe the NARS concealer is like high 20s, mid 30s. And even a lot of people have a lot of hesitation purchasing that concealer for the price point. So the Clay de Peau concealer for it being what it is, I mean, it's a concealer, but its price point is just so high. The only reason why I can justify it is that it's just so good. It's that good of a product where I can't live without it. Um, and I have quite a few backups of these, thankfully. If my collection disappeared today and I had to go in and buy concealer, I wouldn't opt for another one. Like I would bypass the NARS one and the Chanel one and just go straight for my Clay de Peau one because it's just that good. Okay, next is eyes and I don't think this will surprise anybody. It is the Tom Ford eyebrow pencil. So I have done a video on this one before. It is my favorite brow pencil of all time. More than Anastasia, more than Chanel. Um, my friend Nikki swears on the Dior one and her brows look pretty freaking bomb. So I might, give that one a try. I mean, I've used Dior before, but I never really got into it, so I might give that one a try, but out of all the brow pencils I've tried, the Tom Ford one, yes, it's expensive, but it does come with two cartridges. So for $50, two cartridges, it comes out to like 25 each brow pencil. So the grammage, like when it comes to weight, um, I feel like it's pretty reasonably priced um, and it does come with a sharpening mechanism. So the eyebrow pencil comes in a it's just standard Tom Ford um, box, but it does come, it comes like this and it does come with an extra um, cartridge of brow product. Um, it is double ended. So this side is the spoolie and then this side is the um, 
actual product. It is a twist up, which Anastasia was the first one to come out with a eyebrow pencil of this, with this technology, um, a twist up angled product. However, Tom Ford is the only company I know that actually has a sharpening mechanism so the issue with all of the other ones on the market is that they don't have a sharpening mechanism so in order for you to get like this nice precise blade like shape is for you to sharpen it on a piece of paper which even then i don't feel like you can get like the nice sharp precise shape as opposed to having a sharpening mechanism you just kind of like wiggle it back and forth in this and it sharpens it for you and that way you're able to get a precise application for your brows every single time and i really appreciate that so that added touch that added feature of having an a built-in sharpening mechanism makes a huge difference the like just the quality of the product so the fact that you get two cartridges and a built-in sharpener and the shade itself is excellent um, I like my brows I don't want it to be too warm I kind of like it to be like on a neutral cool side a lot of brow products tend to run a little warm when it comes to like a brunette this one is a taupe and I like my brows to look a little on again like the cool side because if it's too warm I feel like it just kind of it's a little harsh on my face so having a cool tone to neutral is brown I think is kind of difficult to find so overall this product I'm just obsessed with it it makes doing my brows so easily the shade is perfect the price point is reasonable and the built-in sharpening mechanism amazing like I'm very picky about brow products because brows really can make or break your face your brow product should be a staple product it's not like eyeshadows where you can switch it up it's kind of hard to switch up your brow product there are very few shades I believe there's like only four of them but I think that the shades are versatile enough where everybody can find one that they enjoy. Moving around the eye area is my favorite mascara and it is Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill. So this one is the classic one, which is just the non-waterproof. Usually I get waterproof just because I do have a hooded lid and um, I did have a problem prior with transferring, but as of lately, I don't know what it is. Maybe I've learned to blink less hard. I don't know. But I have been using mascaras that are not waterproof and I haven't had a problem with transfer in my upper or lower lid. Um, but before that was like one of the biggest reasons why I used waterproof because it did help with transferring. Eyes to Kill mascara is the best one that's worked for my lashes. Like I've tried the top five mascaras and none of them have worked for me. Like I've tried drugstore brands. I've tried um, the Chanel Le Volume, which everybody swears by and I hate it. I don't feel like it did anything for me. Um, I've tried the Guerlain one. I've tried the YSL one. I've tried Dior. I've tried MAC. I've tried Clinique. I've tried everything and nothing worked. Like during my college years, during Mascara Madness, where it was buy two, get one free, I always bought three mascaras that I wanted to try because I was so anxious to get something that was going to give me that like nice, falsy mascara look. And I was never able to achieve it until I came across the Giorgio Armani one. And actually it was a sales associate at the um, Nordstrom in not Century City, but at Westside Pavilion. Yes, Westside Pavilion in Los Angeles. I forgot his name like I worked with him once and it was like such a fleeting moment like he introduced me to this mascara never got his name never got his information never saw him again but he introduced this to me and, and I fall in, lo in love with this mascara for years this is the only mascara that I will use literally till the day I die it's the only one that holds up my lashes that extends it gives it enough volume and holds a curl without transferring so and it's a big deal for Asian lashes because Asian lashes grow straight down we don't have that like natural like perkiness so for it to hold up like my lashes all day it's a big deal so last one which you guys might be surprised about actually like I feel like this list of products might come as a little surprising for you guys anyway but the last product that I want to talk about is a single MAC eyeshadow and I don't think I've ever formally talked about this but this is my favorite eyeshadow of all time and this is my favorite eyeshadow that I've worn since I first started getting into makeup and it is because I watched All That Glitters 21. She was one of the first makeup gurus that I was watching and this was back when I was in high school. I think it was like 2010, 2009 even. Like I watched her, I remember I watched her and Juicy Star 07. So Elle and Blair Fowler, 
I watched them since the beginning when the makeup community was first starting to gain traction at all. So All That Glitters 21, um, Elle Fowler, she, this was the, her favorite eyeshadow. That This is what she named her channel after. It was this eyeshadow. And I saw her wear it one time in one of the first makeup tutorials that I watched from her and I fell in love with the lid shade. It's a pinky, coppery, purpley, perfect lid shade. More than likely, if you see me wearing a lid shade, it's all that glitters. And it's such a staple. I, regardless of what eye look that I'm wearing, this lid shade is so complimentary of it. And let me just swatch it real quick for you. Um, it's just such a pretty lid shade. Like, ugh. It's just like, it's such a pretty sheen. Like, it's just, it's the perfect pink. It has a slight hint of copper. It has a slight hint of taupe. I think it's just so flattering. And this is one of those products where I absolutely would have to repurchase because I could wear this even when I'm not wearing eyeshadow like on a very minimalistic makeup day. Like this would be a very realistic color to just like slap on. And I know it might surprise you guys, but like yeah, if I had to start over, I would definitely buy this MAC single eyeshadow. All that glitters. And then just a bonus one. I know this is the top five, but like I'm just gonna throw this one because this eyeshadow palette has never failed me. And I kind of debated on whether or not I want to throw it in there, but I'm going to throw it in there anyway as like a bonus. So I love brown smoky eyes. Those, it's my favorite smoky eye. I, I feel like it's the easiest one for me to work with just because it gives me like the intensity of a black smoky eye without making my eyes look overwhelming. Like, it'll give me the intensity without the harshness of a black smoky eye. So I feel like a brown smoky eye is very flattering. It's easier to work with and it's just very, it's like sultry in its own way. And so finding the perfect brown eyeshadow palette is kind of essential for me and I have gone through so many but the one that I constantly reach for is the Tom Ford eyeshadow palette in Coco Mirage number three. So the colors in here are just super pretty. It has just never failed me. Like these colors, mm, so good. Not too warm, not too cool, like perfect chocolatey colors and just so flattering um very rarely do i use the white one but sometimes i will maybe as an inner corner highlight or as like a slight brow highlight but these just to like deepen up my eye look or like just to smoke out my eye so good so rich so pigmented so pretty and the grammage in this very high expensive for what it is yes i believe this quad retails for like 80 bucks again expensive for an eyeshadow because there are definitely cheaper eyeshadows out there. I mean, MAC eyeshadows are way cheaper. Morphe eyeshadows are way cheaper, but like there's something about the quality of these shadows and the color of these shadows and the way they complement each other that I have not been able to achieve with any other palette on the market. So Tom Ford Coco Mirage eyeshadow palette would also be something that I would definitely repurchase if my entire collection goes missing today. So that's it. Those are all the products that I would definitely repurchase if my whole makeup collection were to go missing. I would love for you guys to let me know like what products you guys would buy if this, you know, if your entire collection went missing. I Is this a thing? Like, is this a tag that people already do that I'm just late on or is this something that I created? I don't know. I, I haven't seen any other videos like floating around just like this. So I would love to see other videos. Link them down below if like you guys know anyone that's kind of talked about this. Um, yeah, like makeup products that you would definitely buy or repurchase if your entire collection disappeared. When you have a lot of makeup, it's kind of easy to like pick and choose, but when you're, when you go from having like a lot of options to no options, you kind of have to know where your priorities lay and where to pick and choose and what to pick and choose. So any questions, comments, concerns, of course, listen down below, reach out to me on Instagram, Kakao Talk, however you guys want to, you know, reach out to me. Let's chat all my information's down below. Um, I will try to remember to link the information down below of the products that I talked to, talked about today. Most likely I will not remember. I will try to remember, um, but, I think you guys know me by now. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys again next time. Bye.